And if he sees us getting along, I feel like as he gets older, like he'll treat, he'll be able to treat, you know, his spouse or partner with respect as well. But right. um, it's funny because um, I wanted to put him in, uh, I think it was either kickboxing or boxing. And uh, she's like total opposite. Like I grew up playing like contact sports and like I boxed for a little bit. I did wrestling in high school and um, she's like, I don't want him like around that violence. And I'm like, it's not violence. Like it's actually teaching him discipline. Like it's the exact opposite of violence. Like, yeah, it's, it's a violent sport for se. I get it because that, that's what we see. But a lot of people don't see what the training like entails, which is pure discipline, right? structure, all that stuff. And I was like, you know, Lord and behold, one day you and Warren are walking down the street and Warren's 16 or 15 years old. And some guy comes up to you and, and your partner's not there. I'm not there. And Warren could defend you like Warren, you know, that's something I want him to learn. Like, I feel like boy or girl, they need to learn how to defend themselves. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And especially some of these kids, man, at uh, you know, my jujitsu school, jiu school that I go to. Some of these kids are like 12, 13 years old, kick the crap out of a grown man, you know. They're killers. So, so absolutely. They're man. killers. Absolutely. I, I see it on Instagram. I'm like, <laughs> man, like, it's a different, it's a different breed now, especially obviously with social media, we can see it more. But like, I feel, I mean, just same thing with like skating. Like you see these kids jumping off big staircases and I'm like, oh my gosh, like sports in general have evolved. Like these, these parents are pushing their kids into sports younger and younger and making it more of an issue which is which could, which could be good or bad but it seems like a lot of positive is coming out of it yeah i think so i think uh sports still has its place you know with with kids and you know how are we raising our kids you know unfortunately uh like my wife will always tell me you know we're just not re making the same kind of kids the output of kids these days you know personally i never really saw it you know like mm -hmm. uh with parenting and, and the whole the whole idea that you know kids are being coddled and all that kind of stuff yeah, because uh, you know I was always hard on my kids and stuff. Yeah, but you know apparently we're we're pumping out a bunch of kids that are gone soft. So I think it's super important to have kids in things like jujitsu or wrestling or baseball, you know, sports. I'm not yeah. real big on the football just because of all the the helmet head to head hitting and yeah. stuff. But you know it's you know my my stepson was in uh, the pop Warner for a while, mm -hmm. and I didn't really care for it too much. Yeah, just I just thought, eh, I mean. I remember in high school, man, I would, I would, I was a hitter. Yeah. And, uh, I just remember how angry I was after my freshman year. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I was no junior say how, but you know, no, but like, I get you. No, I get you. And I, I mean, from what I see, you take care of yourself and your athletics. So I could only imagine like, you know, what, what you're telling me, but, but I totally get what you're saying. Like footballs, they say, they say MMA is barbaric, but like, I feel like football is a little bit more barbaric because there's the, the only thing that you want to do is is score a touchdown and like yeah everybody has their role on the field but like essentially you're trying to score a touchdown and it's like you can get hit from the side and you won't even have the ball like it's right. it's right, like right. it's very like almost like no holds bar like everyone's just like kind of clashing with each other on the field and um it's a great sport obviously it takes endurance strength like some of the best athletes you'll see are in fact football players but i i, I agree with you i've I'm a fan of football, but I'm more into like the one on one or like yeah. I like yeah. hockey. Like hockey's great. My favorite sport is boxing. You okay. know, I grew up watching boxing, but football, I would rather football's kind of weird. It is because you know it's only it's only unique to the United States. Uh, That's right. As far as I know, they don't have football in other countries and stuff like no. that. And just the whole thing is kind of off. And you know, the weird thing that kind of irritates me is that they're always changing the rules. The <laughs> yes. rules change all the time. And, and one time I was watching a, a game with uh, some of my in-laws uh, last, uh, last season. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was, I was clueless to how clueless I was about what the rules were. Yeah. I was like, oh man, that was totally a touchdown. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh no, well they got this new rule where, you know, yes. if you pass the plane, but you got to get both feet over. I was like, what the heck? Yeah. That's not the football I remember. No, nah, it, it has changed a lot. It, it really has. It's, <laughs> it's funny. It, it's funny, but it's, it, it also is like going with, with saying like, I don't know the exact quote, but it's like back in the day, like they used to put gladiators in the Coliseum and it's like, it was strictly to distract us and for our first, like our entertainment for say. And like, I feel like that's what football is. Like it, it, it makes sense what you're saying. There's really, it's kind of just one of those sports that's only played in America. 
basketball is played overseas. Right. Soccer or football is played overseas. Like almost everything is played overseas, but there's no football overseas. So that's kind of like, and it's, and it's, I think it is the most popular sport besides baseball in our country. You know, I wonder if that's because, you know, like, Say you put a Chinese a China team together, Chinese mm-hmm. team. I mean, well, they're 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 kind of kind of smaller people. They are, you know, and they they don't they're have like my like, size. They don't, yeah, <laughs> they don't have big old dudes like we no. do over here, six foot. Some well, they might have tall guys, but genetically, they genetically just don't match they're up. smaller. Like how how's that gonna work? And, or you know, maybe like a Russian team, <laughs> but but you know, around the world, they don't really play football. So. Yeah, but Russian dudes aren't. They don't want to play football. They're they're too busy wrestling bears or doing right, shit up right, in the mountains. Right. Like they yeah. they. Oh, they're great wrestlers, man. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, those guys are wrestlers for yeah, sure, Yeah, they're man. bred to, to <laughs> like I said, they're wrestling bears growing up. So they're just, that's a, a whole different conversation. Right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, that's where you get guys like Khabib and mm-hmm. you know, guys like that. Yeah. And uh, they usually pump out some pretty good grapplers. Well, we were having this conversation at work. Uh, it was Friday. We were talking because, you know, there's some big fights on today. Hey, there is, huh? Yeah, yeah. Three, UFC 300. It's it, the right. cards. The card looks great. But um, we were talking about um, mixed martial arts, and um, like I said, I'm a huge boxing fan, but I love MMA. And um, I was telling the guys that the best fighters are good wrestlers. And he and he, the guy, my my friend was trying to argue with me, and I, he was like, "Well, in a street fight, this and that." And I'm like, "Look, I'm not saying you can't use jujitsu." Or boxing in a street fight. You can 100%. But if a natural wrestler and let's say a boxer come head to head in a street fight and the boxer throws a couple punches, lands lands the punches because technique wise his, his footwork is like there for position. But if that guy grabs you, the fight's over. Especially if you've got a little uh, judo in his background. Yeah, uh, the, the fight's the over. Yeah. What's the boxing guy going to do? He, well, he could knock you to you could knock you out. He can, but I what mean, I'm saying is, is like once that wrestler gets past those couple punches and grabs even your wrist, yeah, like you know in judo or or what's the other one where it's like they use the throwing? Is it? Uh, I forgot. But those those sports are very interesting. Like those, those the wrestling is 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 if you're a good wrestler, you're you're probably gonna excel. Well, in, you're, you're certainly better off if you had it. Yes. <laughs> if you didn't. Yes. Absolutely, man. I mean, 100%. 100%. But I always uh, tell people, you know, you got to have, and, 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 and people like Joe Rogan have talked about this. So, I mean, it's out there. But having like, obviously you want a jiu-jitsu background. Yeah. But you want to have striking, mm-hmm. uh, judo, you know, mm-hmm. get that person to the ground. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, I do tournaments and stuff. I got one coming up, you know, for example. And there's, getting someone to the ground is not as easy sometimes as you think. When you're two drunken fools in a street fight, yeah, you guys are both going to the Someone's ground. Someone's falling. Yeah, <laughs> but but to actually get someone and take them to the ground without hurting yourself, I mean that that's a, that's a skill in itself. Oh know? yeah, oh oh yes, that's that's something I learned quickly in high school when I was um, in wrestling. When I try to grab somebody and get them to the ground, it's it's that other guy. It's it's kind of it's there's like that jungle intensity. Like you're not <laughs> getting me to the ground. Like I'm getting you to the ground. Right. And when you have two people that are you know, it's wrestling, so they're both kind of physically already matched up because it's by weight. It's like it's it's a competition, and and we're men, so we want to win. Right. You know, when <laughs> I was a, when I was a kid, man, I used to get in a lot of fights for whatever reason. Yeah. Probably because I probably because I got picked on a lot, but mm-hmm. I would get in a lot of fights. And I remember I always wanted to go to the ground. I didn't know anything about jujitsu or wrestling, but I always wanted to go to the ground at some point early on because I knew once you went to the ground, they would pull you off of each other and break it up. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? That's laughs> like, Cause I just you know I was, I was I was always getting picked on by you know the the kid who was one grade up yeah you know and I mean that happened from first grade on all the way up until about sixth grade hmm. yeah and even in junior high like I don't know what it was man I don't know if guys whatever it was just wanted to fight with me and then when I got to high school and started lifting weights yeah that's when it all just changed yeah all I had to do is just knock a couple of guys out and like hey, do we the don't reputation mess with this was guy. there yeah. yeah yes and that's how that's how martial arts were for me all the way up until i found jujitsu was that people you fake it sometimes you know i remember doing you know, different types of martial arts mm-hmm. and it's not like wrestling where like when you're on the mat there's no there's no faking it no because once you're rolling on the mat you're gonna find out real quick where your skill levels are 100 percent. but with boxing and 
karate and all this stuff. It's 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 there's a lot of showmanship. Yeah. Because you don't really know. You know, like no. you're you're doing your forms and all this funky stuff. Mm -hmm. And but and then even when you do tournaments, I've done tournaments that are karate tournaments and stuff, and it's kiss contact. And yes. it's still kind of an uh, element of fakeness to it. No, I, not you, I mean, if you get in a ring with a boxer, for sure, you're going to find out who's a better boxer, for 100%. sure. Yes. But, but you don't really build the same com camaraderie. It's more competitive in the sense, like, I'm going to knock your ass out. And, yeah. you know, I'm just going to... It has a, a, a more killer mentality. Jiu-Jitsu is very... Uh, what do they, they call it? The gentle art. Mm-hmm. I think they do anyway. It is a gentle art, though, because you could choke a mug, choke a guy out, but you're the guy when the guy taps, you're like, oh, and then you guys yeah. shake hands after, and it's over. It, it seems like a sport. It, it's funny. I've been going. Um, my buddy Dave, one of my best friends, he actually works right here in Uptown. Oh yeah, I'm um, at the barber shop. I saw him today. I gave him a a, a Jocko Willick or Jocko like book. Yeah, I, I like was that reading. Guy. Oh, which one? Oh, I forgot what it was called. I, I bought it years ago. And um, I just keep it in my car if I'm, like, bored or if, like, I'm somewhere and I need to read it. I just kind of flip through because yeah. it's a really easy read. Yeah, I love big. easy reads, yeah. Yeah, so I just kind of can flip and it'll, like, flip my mindset. And I bet whatever. you there's gold in there. It's probably not a oh, very big book. It's but not. Books like that got it's, gold. You know? Dude, it, it's so clutch. Like, if I'm ever feeling, like, lazy or stagnant or whatever, like, I could just open that book and, like, whatever page I flip to, it's, like, it, it, it'll, it'll hit the spot. Yeah. But, um... I've been going to his jujitsu competitions just to like support him because you know. Oh, your buddy does jujitsu. He does jujitsu, and he just got into it. Like, that's how we became friends. Like, I I booked a an appointment with him at American Vintage. This is the name of the barbershop. Yeah, American Vintage Barbershop. Oh, where's that Whittier. located at? It's Give right there off of Greenleaf. Greenleaf in Uptown Whittier. Yes, sir. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, and it's been there for I want to say ten years now, and that's a part of that story I was telling you of that dude Eric. Where the his, guy who passed away? Yes. Dude, that was so crazy, man. Uh, yes. I was telling you that uh, one day, this this is like not even a year ago probably, mm -hmm. right? I remember I was driving down uh, the street right here that we're on and hearing the story on the radio and I was just, or, yeah, it had to be the radio. It could have been, it could have been my phone. Who knows? It's one of those things where you act like you read a book, but you didn't. And I probably saw it on YouTube. But anyway, I remember that dude, uh, I guess he got hit on while he was on his motorcycle and passed yeah. away. And I thought it was the saddest thing because they were talking about how he had a couple of kids and a wife. Two daughters and a wife. And it's tragic, you know, when a, when a man loses his life and leaves his family behind, especially young children. I mean, the, the, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, you know. No. I mean, it, it, it's up there with, it's right below. I was telling uh, uh, my buddy uh, Anthony yesterday that, you know, my greatest fear is obviously losing or losing a child or losing yeah. oh, or losing one, you know, oh. out, like can't find them. But the oh. next thing down is like dying on your kid and leaving them orphans, you know? Like, yeah. That's a, that's a crazy thing. Yeah. And I, it, it, that kind of plays in the conversation we kind of had had a couple of weeks ago about like how kids need their father just as much as they need their mother. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, um, and, and there's certain roles that both play, um, but, you know, going back real quick to, to Dave, the guy at the barber shop, um, I've been going to his jiu-jitsu competitions and, like, being a guy and competitive, I'm like, I want to do this. And yeah. then, like, I, like, actually watch them do it, and I'm like, man, not, not only are these guys strong and it takes, like, a lot of endurance, but technically it's just so crazy. Like, you can make the smallest mistake mm -hmm. and the fight's over. Yeah. And that's... Well, that's, that's, all, that's all I'm looking for. I'm, I'm waiting for you. A lot of times yeah. with guys who have a high skill level... I'm waiting for them to make mistakes. Because, yeah. you know, you get up against a brown or a black belt, they don't make many. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they're stronger and they're bigger than you, maybe, or even smaller, and they still whoop in your butt. Yeah, because it's technique and it's like, it's it's just like boxing. Like, a guy could be faster than you, but if your timing's better, you're going to, you know, the timing, timing always beats speed. Every time. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're Pernell Whitaker, Floyd Mayweather, like, I mean, obviously it does. Those guys are great, but... Uh, timing always beats speed. It, it you could I mean from the Marquez Pacquiao fights like Pacquiao way faster than Marquez, but Marquez timed him mm. every time. Yeah, we got little guys at my gym, man. Like on the on the little guys on are the, scrapping, on man. The mat, man, I I you know I I mean I they don't I don't have any problems with them, mm -hmm. but straight up striking, 
kick my butt, man. The little <laughs> guys have a scrap, man. The little yeah. guys have a scrap. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll admit that one. So what's going on? When are you gonna start jujitsu, man? Uh, you know what? It's it's one of those things where uh, I have my hands dipped in everything. That's kind of like where I've been with like this whole fitness thing. The, like the last fifteen years. Like it started with. It re- it really really genuinely started with boxing when I was like nineteen twenty, and then from there it just kind of blossomed into everything. So you got a boxing background? I do. I so box tell me about like that, yeah. off and on for like four or five years, straight up. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't have the discipline. I had. I believe I had the talent. Like my coach told me, I had the talent, and um, I just wasn't disciplined. I I was a, a heavy drinker, mm. so I would go and train for three four months and fight, and then I disappear. Because, I, totally, I could totally relate to that. Yes, because I, I was like, cool, I accomplished something. And then what I didn't realize until, like, obviously, like, in my late 20s is that, like, like you have to be consistent in these type of things. You know what I mean? Like, you can't – the best the best fighters always stayed in the gym or always stayed on weight or always didn't go out partying, like, that type of situation. Right. So um, I did that, and it was fun. And then that kind of faded out, and I was already doing the road work. So then I turned into a runner. I just kept running. And then from there, I just kind of just jumped around, you know? Like, I had, in my teens, I already played hockey. Um, I played water polo. I did wrestling. I did all kinds of different things in high school and in and out of the things because I wasn't disciplined. Yeah. And that's something, like, I've learned later in life, like, with this journey in fitness being the age that I am, like I'm 37, like there's a big difference between being motivated and being disciplined. Like if you, you could wake up unmotivated any day of the week, but if you have discipline, like if you just like say, stop being a little bitch, excuse my language, like you're going to get the job done. And that's something I wish I knew when I was in my teens and in my twenties. And that's something I want to teach my son is like that, like dude, discipline's going to be, everything everything like i wish i had that little ounce of discipline that i have now back in my 20s because it would have been a whole different story and even if i wasn't like the best fighter alive or whatever like at least i did it and that's not like the only kind of regret i had in my life was that i wasn't disciplined enough to actually give myself like a shot even if i went in there and went oh and five like at least i did it like you can't knock it until you try it you know like I, and I and, and that's like the thing that sucks about social media is like you know everyone has an opinion, right. so like everyone wants to talk the talk and like half more than half the people don't even don't even step inside of a jujitsu gym or don't step inside of a boxing ring or don't step on a um, ice rink and play hockey. It's 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 crazy, but um, but yeah, fitness has always been a part of my life. Like I just um, I was a super heavy drinker and um, I used physical things especially boxing and running to like yeah i use it as an outlet you know what i mean and then um it was it, i'm i'm a very um all or nothing guy I, there's no uh, gray area for me i'm a uh, i'm all in for everything so like when i was a drinker i was all in all in i was the drunkest guy at the party at the bar spending the most money doing the stupidest thing and it was the same thing with like fitness. Like I was, I wanted to be the fastest runner. I, if you were running, if you were running um, flat, I was running hills. If you're running hills, I would go to the mountains. Like that's, that was my mentality all the time. So like it was great, but it was terrible because like uh, with, with, you know, with drinking, it, it, didn't, <laughs> it didn't lead me anywhere. Like I, there's been so many opportunities that I missed because I was an alcoholic and I still am an alcoholic, but I haven't had a drink in almost seven years. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah. So like that quitting drinking just changed my whole life. It it changed everything. And um, I am the person that I am today because I made that decision. You know what I mean? Like my son will never, ever see me even the least bit buzzed or drunk or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I can proudly say that and, and I thank God for that because, like, honestly, I because I'm an all or nothing person, I know my personality, I wouldn't be here sitting in this chair. I would be either dead in jail or in the gutter, like in Skid Row somewhere. Right. Because that's my personality. Right. I was smart enough to know that I was dumb. So I, I, I had to change my life. And 
when I quit drinking, because I was already involved in fitness, like that helped me so much. I was able, like, instead of going to the bar when I was frustrated, I was able to go run Turnbull Canyon or go run in Long Beach or go lift weights or go just do whatever. I would, I would do Spartan races. I'd go jump on my road bike. I'd jump, I have a kayak, like anything to like let go of that energy or like that, that like fill that mental space with something positive. So, um, I, I totally get, you know, where you're coming from. Yeah. I have a lot of, uh, missed opportunities myself. Same thing with the, the boxing and kickboxing when I was yeah. younger, uh, was always, you know, do, doing really good, you know, and then, and then, and then I would just couldn't get off the drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. just all the wasted talent. Mm -hmm. And I think about that a lot. You know, I was, uh, I was reading the Bible and I was listening to some, uh, this preacher talk about how God will give you your time back. I, I, I don't want to mess it up for people probably know what I'm talking about, but yeah, like I have to remind myself that something is going to come from all those years I wasted, yes. you know, being a waster. You know, I pray to God every day that he, something will come out of that because uh, that whole experience that you're talking about, like all those missed opportunities, all mm -hmm. that stuff, like it weighs heavy. Yeah. It weighs heavy. And like to think of all the years I wasted, all the talent. I'm 45 now, so it's yeah. not like I can go back in time like you're saying mm -hmm. and be this. Uh, I always knew I could be a, a badass kickboxer or an athlete. And I'm a great athlete. I think I'm a pretty good athlete yeah. you know, as a jiu-jitsu practitioner, but it's also a lot easier Mm -hmm. uh, on the body for someone that's my age and to yeah. be able to fight on the ground. Um, but trying to be a boxer or a kickboxer yeah. these days and, and actually, you know, excel. be a champion or excel yeah. at it. Yeah, man, my, those, those days are lost because of the alcohol. Yes. You know? And so how did you do it, man? How'd you get sober? What, what, what went down? Uh, you know what? You said it, seven years, right? Uh, going on seven years. I think it's seven or eight. I, 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 you kind of lose track at some point, which I don't, Probably better that way. Yeah, like, I don't really, it, it doesn't bother me that, like, like I was thinking about the other day, I think it was even before, like, I came in here, I was thinking about it, I thought it might come up, and I was like, am I seven or eight years? Like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, my whole thing is, I was reading this interview with Tom Hardy, um, the actor, and he's he's yeah. sober, too. Oh, is that right? Well, he does jiu-jitsu. And understand. he does jiu-jitsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dude's a badass. He's a, I is love that right? Tom Hardy. He's a badass. But anyways... He was he in this interview. They were talking about his alcoholism and when he quit and blah blah blah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. he. I think he's going on over twenty years of not having a no drink. Way. Or, yeah, uh, you would never guess. How old is that dude? Tom Hardy. I want to say it is in like his mid to late forties. Is that he's my age? Huh? Yeah, he's 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 not young, but he's not old. He's just he's right there and like yeah. Been, I mean, he's been around a while. So yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah. So he's just doing this interview and they're talking about his drinking and he said. I will pat myself on the back for not drinking when I double the years that I drink. Mm. And like, it took me a second to think about that. I'm like, that's genius. Like when I quit when drinking. He doubles it. So like here, I'll explain it to you. Like, okay. So I quit drinking at 29. Yeah. I well, started. How long drinking. were you drinking? Then? So I started drinking at 13. Wow. I started really drinking at 13. So like, that's what, um, 17 years Don't of drinking? Me, public school. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like 16 or 17 years of drinking. Wow. And it's crazy because at 29, I was 17 years into like my alcohol career. Like that's sad. Yeah. I, I, and I'll say it like some people take pride in like how much they can drink and all that. And I, I, it, I don't. Drinking does nothing for you. That's just my opinion. It doesn't, you can, man. You can, it, you can think whatever you want. It does the I'm opposite, not. actually. Yeah, so, but to each your own. I don't have, yeah. I'm not against people that drink. I yeah. still, all my friends still sometimes, and I'm with them, and they're, they're great people. You're able to just stay away, like to refrain from drinking? Yeah, so when I pass 17 years of drinking, that's when I'll give myself a pat on the back. So that's you, like you were drinking for 17 years. Yeah. Right? So like when I'm sober or, or not drinking for 17 years, then I'll be able to oh, be like, Hey, okay. Okay. Like you're kind of doing something here. Hmm. So when I quit drinking, um, I hadn't had Warren yet. So my son was non-existent, but me and the mother of my child were like going back and forth because I was a terrible person. I did terrible things. We won't even name the things that I did, but I just wasn't a good partner. And, um, so I'm sitting there and I went on, um, I remember drinking with my cousin. Um, he came down for his birthday and I was living in Torrance at the time. So we went down to Hermosa Beach and partied on Hermosa Beach three days straight, drinking, partying, just doing whatever we're doing. And um, 
I have a decent job, pretty good job, and so does he. So we were just spending the money. We didn't you, care. At the time you had a decent job or the same job? I had the same now? job. So what I you? work for a local 724. I do construction for the movie sets and TV. Oh, sweet. So it's a union job, pension, blah, 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 blah. It's, I can provide for my family. It's, yeah. it's great. I, I'm, I'm super blessed. Do you work on a, a particular show? Or? Right now, I, I don't even know the show I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it for like a decent amount of time to where like I just don't even care what show I'm working on. It's like all so repetitive. Like it's fun, but it's like, oh, we're building... TV and movie set. Like right. the first couple of years, I was like, this is exciting. And now I'm like, I'm tired. Are you like so behind it that you don't meet anybody or do you meet like? Oh, uh, you cross paths with, with stars. Oh, cool. And yeah, a lot of them are cool, cordial. Like mm. it's cool. It, it's, it's a great job. It's a whole other different world. Like that's, that's a, yeah. Working for the studios is, it's funny. It's interesting. But, um, so we're partying and he does the same thing. We both work for the studio. So like we don't, money d- didn't matter. Like we weren't balling, but yeah, we had money to spend. So we're, buying drinks at the bar, doing this, doing that. And um, it's a Sunday. I remember it was a Sunday and I was hung over because we had drinking three days in a row. Excuse me. And then um, I'm sitting at the bar and I was sad. And at the time, I'm not going to lie. Um, I kind of had everything that, like, that a man would want. Like I had my own place, my own car, a good job. I was single but dating multiple women like all the stuff in the world all the stuff in the world that you would think you want as a man like i was in shape whatever like everything was going well for me you had your shit together exactly and i'm sitting at the bar and and i'm fucking i'm sad Mm. i'm sad and i'm like thinking in my head i'm like why am i so sad like this is weird like it just and i was with my cousin who is like my best friend who just actually is going on two years of not drinking himself which is like it's amazing like more and more people are going that route. Right now or at the time? Oh, you're at the now, Right now he's going yeah, yeah. like on two years, which is like, it's crazy to think about like just six, seven years ago, we were like causing a ruckus right. everywhere we went. So I'm sitting there and like, I, I ask myself, I say, why are you so sad? And then I'm like, obviously it's because I was drinking and I knew I didn't want to drink anymore. You figured that out at that moment? At that moment. And I asked myself this question. I said, how many of your problems in life have, be, have been because of alcohol? And I sat there and I thought about it. And like ninety percent of my problems in life were because of alcohol. Yeah, hey, that's pretty good. Financial For me it was a hundred. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so you you can relate. Absolutely, we talk. Me and my wife talk about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can relate. So oh, like, absolutely. I just, I promise you, at that moment, sitting at Hermosa, I, I I could I could if I seen the bar, I could probably even remember the bar. I was like, I'm done. And I didn't say, say anything to my cousin or anything. Like, I finished that last drink, that Bloody Mary, like, at 9 in the morning. I don't know what the fuck we were doing at a bar at 9 in the morning. Yeah. But um, I was done. And I quit. And I and I went cold turkey. And and that was it. I, I never turned no around. No relapse after that. Nothing. Nothing. Just- not, not a sip. Wow. And um, it's just, I've just known. And then, you know, four months later, the mother of my child got pregnant. We got back together. She got pregnant. And then here comes Warren. And it was just like even more of a reason to follow this path. And like thinking about it now, like it's like that was God's plan the whole time. He needed me to that. That was my rock bottom. Everybody's rock bottom is different. Like, and I'm glad that was my rock bottom. Yeah. Like I could have been so much worse. Yeah. I had done some dumb things financially. I had been in and out of jail a couple of times this and that but like that was my rock bottom was like this mental and emotional i would i guess breakdown or just i was super emotional and i just couldn't figure it out it you was what, almost like depression you know what's cool is that you're you you found your rock bottom but you were in a high place in yeah. your life a lot of people they're they're when they hit they hit rock their rock bottom it's because everything's going wrong in their life and everything's just gone to hell yeah and then they find it but it sounds like you found it at a high point and mm-hmm. realized like I'm not I got everything I, could, I thought I ever wanted but you seem to have sensed that there was something missing yeah there was something wrong and that and that something was true happiness mm-hmm. real real happiness because like I as the years went on that I didn't drink I realized that I really wasn't happy yeah. I really wasn't sad I really wasn't excited i really wasn't um depressed I, everything was was changed mentally and emotionally by alcohol if i was excited for the day 
I wanted to be more excited, so I would grab a drink. Or I'd go pick up this or go pick right, up that. Right, yeah, yeah. You think you're going to enhance your... Exactly. Yeah. So it was like, that's not real happiness. No, it's that's, not. That's genuinely not real happiness. So, like, as time went on and I, I stopped drinking, and it, and it took me a while to adjust. It, it wasn't like I quit drinking in a year and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy. Life is so good. No. You, you, you... For me and my sobriety, by the way, I got one year this week. Oh, congrats. Yeah, thanks, That's man. right. That's great to hear. Thank you, man. And you know, it's crazy because uh, I realized, man, I'm because I because my problems didn't go away. But instead, I'm actually for the first time in my life after 25 years of, of drunkenness, dealing with what's in front of me, the problems yeah. that I got going on, the, the, the troubles in my relationships with my family or my marriage or whatever it is. I'm no longer able to just escape. I mean, I could. Yeah. But I'm no longer escaping through the bottle. Yeah. And like, so I would imagine. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's and I would beautiful. imagine that that's, you, maybe perhaps you had a similar experience where, oh, shoot, now I got time under my belt sober. So what changed? Like, what, what did happen as soon as oh, you got sober? Man, um, everything. I mean, just the way I handled money, the way I handled people, like, um, your relationships become more. My meaningful. relationship did become more meaningful, but it was a difficult time because I got sober while my the mother of my child got pregnant. So, like, I'm heading into fatherhood while trying to balance out like these new things that are happening, and these new things are called emotions. Right. So, like, I didn't feel anything for seventeen years from thirteen to twenty nine. I wasn't really feeling real emotions. So, like. Going into that and going into like a new fatherhood and then trying to mend the relationship with the mother of my child was super difficult. What was going on? Just, it was just, it was tough because she had dealt with so much of like the things that I did. And it, it, I'm getting a little emotional right now because I, I put her through a lot. And she, st she stood there. She stuck around. And with that, like there's resentment. So, like, she she did the best that she could because she loved me and because we were having a child together. But, like, she couldn't heal while dealing with also being pregnant, too. <laughs> like, her hormones are all over the place. And it, sh it was a lot for both of us. So, it just, um, you know, we tried our best and uh, it just didn't work out. But, like, that that's just was what God's plan was. And... And she's an amazing human being, amazing human being, like the, the really good mother, really good person. Um, so, I mean, I have nothing bad to say about her. And, and I'm, I'm grateful. I, I thank God every day that she's Warren's mom because she's a really good, I, it could have been worse. Right. It could have been worse. And I, I ended up with this person sharing another human being with this person that's, that's amazing. So, the, you know, um, with that being said, like the things that changed were just, just I, honestly, like everything changed, but the only way I can put it like in, in the perspective that's, that's easier to like explain instead of like going into like super details, like my happiness mm. every year, like things just got better and I just got happier. And like, I, you couldn't, you, you couldn't pay me to take that away, you know, like just waking up and even on the shittiest days, whatever happened, a family death, um, a financial thing, um, getting laid off from a job or something happening to my son, whatever, the, the millions of things that could happen. Like, right. like you realized or that you're starting to realize is like you can handle these things with a clear mind. And it's like, dude, it's, it's, it's beautiful. You don't have to go like you're not running away from anything. You're not, you're not like... Like the tough guy act that we were taught as as kids because we kind of almost come from the same generation. Yeah. I'm not that much um, younger than you. Like I was taught to not show emotion. I was taught to not cry. I was taught to not speak unless you're spoken to. Um, all that stuff. You know, my dad's military, an old school Mexican, and all my uncles are the same way. And I was taught a lot of those things, which benefited us, guys like us, because we were able to get through certain things with grit and toughness, right. physical things. But at the end of the day, it, in my opinion, it backfired because it also showed us not to have empathy, not to have feelings, not to honestly give a fuck. Right. 
because we're not supposed to. We're men. We it's whatever we say goes, and we're the breadwinners, and blah 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 blah. It's like nah. Yeah, we're, like, we're supposed to bear our depression. Yes, whatever we're feeling, hide we're that supposed shit. to. Yeah, hide it. Yeah. Hide that shit because you're a man, and right. it's like. Uh, it, it got to a point where the alcohol and those things, um, they clashed right. and it could have went one way or the other. And I, I decided that I was sick of it. And, um, you know, not only quitting drinking, but using other outlets, like, to be honest with you, therapy, yeah. God, most importantly, absolutely, to like really take back those years that I was taught those things. And honestly, my parents were great. They did the best that they could. They, they were fantastic. It was just a different way of parenting back then. Right. And we weren't, we weren't, you know, going back to how we weren't really taught to, you know, share those emotions. One thing I learned from sobriety, even over this last year, it's amazing how many relationships I've developed over the last few years, especially with jujitsu, but even more so with sobriety mm. and, you know, finding Jesus. I, I learned that fellowship is so critical, you know, when I have problems, you know, going down with my wife or I got problems going on with whatever it is I'm going through. Yeah. I got, a, I got a couple of handfuls of guys, like, like real dudes mm -hmm. that I can call in this, uh, vent to or talk to about what's going on. They'll listen, give me advice. I think it's so important for men to have that, yeah. to have that group of dudes. Because when I was growing up, I, I didn't never developed real, like, uh, I mean, I had friends, you know, and I had a, I had a couple of good friends and stuff growing up, but I found myself at 20, 25, no friends, no mm. real friends. I mean, I had friends at the bar. No, I get you. I you know understand. guys I, totally I could go get, get drunk yeah. with, but I get what you're saying. no real dude that I can like, Hey man, I'm going through this. I'm yeah. Going through that. And, uh, with sobriety, man. And you know, with finding Jesus, you know, men from church mm -hmm. men who know God where like me and my wife and, you know, me and my buddy and his wife will go have dinner, things like that. Like those, those, those relationships are critical. Yeah. You know I mean? Those, those relationships really keep me in line, you know? Well, the, I, I think it's too, it's because like those interactions have real substance. Yeah. Like you, it, whether you're talking about God or, um, you know, being a father or whatever with those people, they're actually listening and they're actually going through some of the same things that you're going through. And they're not, and they're also going through it with like a, a clear mind. And they're, they're living through Jesus. They're living through their sobriety. They're living through through trials and tribulations, just like you, but they're not ignoring it. They're not just being like, well, I'm just going to go have that fifth of whiskey and everything is going to be fine. Right. And then all of a sudden you wake up and your bank account's empty and you don't know where the fuck you're at. And you're like, whoa, what, what happened? What, what did I do? Like, what? But, you know... Um, I feel like as the more years you stack on to like your sobriety, uh, you'll find that like things are going to change. You'll, you'll see things changing, like whether it's financial, like your relationships or all that other stuff, which is great or great things. But for me personally, I just kept, I just keep getting happier and happier. Like I just like look at life and I'm just like, Oh shit. Like dude, life's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool, dude. Like yeah. the older you get, Man, like life just gets better, especially you, if you're, you're humbled. Yeah, because you're humbled real quick because you go through all these things and you're just like, wow, like I still have food in my fridge. Mm -hmm. Like I still have a good job. Like there's still gas in my car. Like I can still like lay here with my kids and like they love me for for me. You know, like that's you can't you can't take that from somebody that's like living a life like that. Like it, it just you just keep going up every year. Everyone's like, oh, like what's so different or how's life different? And because people have asked me that before with like the, cause I was known as the party guy. Like I would just, and I would spread myself thin, thin to party with so many different people because it was so cool. And now it's like, I just have a, a small group of friends and everyone's like, Oh, what's different. And I'm like, I'm just happy. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm like, happy being like just in bed by nine. Oh bro. Eight, <laughs> <laughs> eight o'clock, man. You know what's crazy, man. Uh, this last Thanksgiving, uh, me and my wife were invited to like a Friendsgiving mm -hmm. type deal, you know, and this is right before Thanksgiving. And I told my wife, you know what, man, let's just call your mom and, and, and Doug, her, her husband's name's Doug, her, yeah. ste her stepdad. And I was just calling him, let's just go to dinner. Yeah. You know, I was like, like, I, I, you know, you know, you're getting old or you're something's happening when your idea of a good time 
it's hanging out with your in-laws and just having a simple dinner and yeah. bed by nine, you know, it's <laughs> like, it's like, but you know what, with that being said, like it, it, it could be a part of beginning old because I agree to an extent, but it's also like, I think that also goes into, um, that the discipline that, that you have as whether it's like your job, because I know you have a serious job, um, being a husband, being a father, um, being a practitioner of jujitsu, like you know, you do know that even though like you're getting older and you're, you're, we're getting more tired because we are, it's just a fact. Yeah. Like, you know, that it's going to benefit you too. like being in bed at nine o'clock. Like absolutely. Sometimes I'll go out and have a cigar and like, I'll sometimes be out like past eight 30, which is a rarity. <laughs> Whereas like before you show up eight 30. Right. And I'm just like, that's true. Right. Yeah. You dude. Uh, and I'm just like, man, like I don't miss this shit. Like it just keeps getting louder and the conversations just become useless and pointless and right, no right. one's paying attention and everyone's doing this and doing that. It's and again, loud. yeah. And nothing against that. There really isn't like, well, it's a young thing. It, it is. For but young, um, yeah, for it, it definitely is. But, um, there's nothing like being at home yeah. in your bed and, and, and just like in the comfort of, of the people that love you, or just, even if you're not around people, like just waking up refreshed and like, cool, like I can get to that 6.30 jujitsu class or I can I can get to that 8 a.m. service, you know, at church or whatever the situation is. But have you been going to church? Yeah, I went last Sunday. Oh, great. Yeah, I was at Eastside. I've been going to Eastside. Um, Where's that? Eastside's in Anaheim. Um, you travel all the way out there? Huh? I do. I, I I really love Eastside. Like, I, I do like WAC a lot. Like the ones, because are you guys still going there? Yeah, we go there. I, I do like that a lot. Um there was just something pulling me towards East Side, and um, what is it? You know what? I can't explain it. I think how someone has asked me this before. I think just like how simple it is. Um, I've been to churches where like a lot of it's like centered around money. Uh, I hated yeah. it. That was like one of the first churches like I went to that ex girlfriend took me to, and. Oh my gosh. And it's a, it's a church in here in Whittier and I'm not even going to name the name. I don't have, to, I don't care, but, um, I have, I have heard on the radio churches, they're popular too. And I'm like, bro, and I was like 20 minutes of just tithing, you know, about 30, tithing. 20, 30 yeah, minutes. And crazy. I, it gave me this, like, just, I didn't like it. I, I just, it just rubbed me the wrong way. And, um, so I strayed away from that church. And then when I went to East side, which was one of the first churches I went to, it was just, I also don't like churches that are super political. Mm. There's some churches out there that are kind of political. Like in what way? <sighs> Just like the whole thing that's going on with like Palestine and Gaza. And I, I, I don't know much about it. I, I've, I've obviously read like a certain amount about it, kind of try to read the history about it. And I don't like talking about things that I'm not like too educated in because yeah. like I don't have an opinion. Yeah. I, I can't have an opinion because I don't know shit. Right. I'm not going to be that guy that like fakes it to make it in that situation. Like, especially like, and it gets heated. Yeah. And especially if we're talking about like people are dying, you know, and I've been to a couple of churches where like, they're kind of like on one side and I'm like, man, like people are dying on both sides. Like it's just, it's too much for me. And, um, when I went to East side, it was just none of that. There was no, right. like, it was just like the, there were lessons and we were going through the Bible and, and it was good. It was simple. It's a really big church. So, like, I've noticed, like, with the smaller churches, like, <laughs> this is, like, totally, like, a personality thing. Like, I don't like the smaller churches because, like, people can get to know you better and, like, it's a little <laughs> bit more personal. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, the big churches, like, I can kind of sit towards the back and, like, I'm in and out. And right. I, it's not that I don't want to, like, associate with people at church. I really don't mind it. Like, I am a people person. But, yeah. like, in my later years, like, I've just, like, become a little bit more, like, secluded and, like, mm. not want to, like... I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe it's a flaw I have. Maybe I need to like look more into like the community things and like the, like how you were saying, like having like a group of people at the church, like that is something that I do need to work on. Right. And I don't know what it is. I, I I'm around people all day at work and I'm a very, like, I like to joke around. I like to have conversations, but were you like that? You said you were like that when you were in the, in the sauce, right? Oh yeah. Well, when, when I was a drinker, which was most of my life, I never liked being around people. I would smoke pot too, so mm -hmm. I would never want to like. Uh, I thought I was. I thought I was an introvert. 
Yeah. And it wasn't until I sobered up that I realized that, oh, crap, I actually like people. Yeah. And I was, and, <laughs> and, and it's so weird. Like, I, have, I, I, I chat people up in the line at the grocery store. Yeah. And, you know, everywhere I go, I'm just talking to people. Because you're happy. Is that what it is? I just, that is what it is. It's like dude. in my own, like, I, like I'm actually here now. You you're, know? you're like, you're processing your thoughts and like, you're just, you're, you're, I think you're just, you just become a new person. So it's yeah. like, what, what, but like, what made you stop drinking? Because it's, it's, it's been a year. Which oh, is, my wife. Okay. My wife just wasn't having it. <laughs> like I couldn't, I couldn't uh, enjoy myself anymore. She just always on me. Yeah. But, and, and she was right. You know, like, she's like, dude, that's like four beers in one hour. Yeah. Like, like uh, and I would always tell her, I'm not like doing anything embarrassing. I mean, I'm cool. Yeah. Like you just drank like 10 beers in front of my mom and family and like, but I'm not stumbling. Yeah. I'm not saying anything. You're dumb. justifying it. I was justifying it. But, but, but in my mind, I was thinking, dude, I'm not doing anything dumb. Yeah. I'm like, chill. I'm a, I'm a, I was a, I'm a happy drinker, you know, like, a, yeah, I don't get violent. I don't get all stupid. Uh, she said sometimes you would slur, but she just didn't think it was good for me. Mm-hmm. And she was just always on me, consistent. And then one day I was like, I'm never going to get her off my back. Yeah. And uh, when I met my wife, I, that's when I started going to church. It's interesting. She was like, when I first met her, you know, we're hanging out at her house. And she's like, you know, I really want to go to church. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's a bunch of baloney. Like, I'm not going, why would you want to do that? It's yeah. like that Bible's fake. All that stuff's fake. It's written by man. You know, yeah. you know the usual Same. stuff people say. Same. And... Uh, the whole, I, 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 in retrospect, I think, or hindsight, I think, man, that was the Holy Spirit came in, came into my mind yeah. and said, you know what? You should take her to church. I think she'll like that. Mm-hmm. You know? And I was like, so then the next day I was like, it, the weekend came and I was like, Hey, why don't we go to church? Mm-hmm. She had already gone to church, you know, yeah. like, but she, she probably wasn't going for a while when I met her. I mean, cause that's why she was, ended up with me. Right. Mm-hmm. Full, full blown drunk, you know, pothead. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, why don't we go to church? So I went with her to whack and I liked it. Yeah, I love whack too. Yeah, right. I, I liked it. And I was like, it's just cool. And then I just kept going. Mm-hmm. But here's the kicker. Because, and I talk about this in my podcasts, podcasts sometimes. Yeah. But I would get, I would be hung over every week. I'd before going to church, I would smoke pot mm-hmm. and I had my little vape pen. Yeah. Even though I was a full blown athlete, you know, jujitsu doing tournament, I would still yeah. have my vape pen. You know, yeah, your, obviously your not being as good. Yeah, it was my vibe. Obviously not being as good as I could be. And, uh, but I just kept going. And, you know, I pray. I get into the Bible. I, I something was happening. It was yeah. happening. I mean, I, I truly believe, you know, my wife brought me to the church. She did. But, but it was, it was the love of God that took, took from me the, the, the addiction from me, mm-hmm. all those addictions what I could not do in 25 years of trying to stop. Yeah. I mean, I, I wanted to stop, you know, I, I wanted to quit drinking. I wanted to quit smoking. I want, I knew I was better. Like we were talking about earlier about all the wasted talent yeah. from drinking and you know, all the things we could have been, but weren't. And God took that from me. I, I it was Jesus. It was the love of God, man. Yeah. And, uh, that's why I always tell people, like uh, I've said a few times on my podcast, you know, come as you are. Yeah. Come just go to church, man. Like, I hear from people all the time. I usually don't invite people to church, but I hear people tell me, I've had a couple of friends tell me, you know, I got to clean this up in my life first, or I got to clean this up. And it's like, dude, just come to church, man. Yeah. Just come as you are. So that's what I would tell anybody is just, just come and And you'll find God do the work and you'll find, yeah, God will show you the answer right in front of your face. Right. It's yeah. No, that's, that's great. But that's, that's cool. how I. But that's how I got sober. It's just that's uh, cool. my wife nagging the crap hell out of me, man. She's she's tough, dude. Yeah, she's super tough, dude. She, it, it's funny how I met her was, I was running up Turnbull. Oh yeah, I was running up Turnbull, and I'm. I don't want to sound like pretentious, but I like I pride myself on like passing people. Mm. Like, I'm super competitive, so. Dude, she she could run. Right? She could run. She could. So like, I'm like running and. I'm going up to the tank and she's coming down and like typical. Well, how long ago was this? This was like four or five years ago. Oh, okay. So like she's running down. I'm I'm running up the tank and she's running down and we do runner thing. We nod. Mm-hmm. And in my head, my first thought was like, I want to catch her on the way down. Yeah. Because I'm catching everybody. Right. And I run down. I, I I do my little thing, my ritual. I rock around the tank. I take a sip of water and then I start running again. I don't really stay up there too long. Right. 
and I'm running you down. The, you, don't, you don't catch the view for a couple of minutes. No, nah, I'm just I'm up there because I'm already like in my headspace, already looking at the mountains. Like I just been up there so many times, and I'm I start running down and like I don't see her, and I'm like, the fuck is this person at? And then I finally like turn a corner and we're like almost done. And I see her way up there and I'm like, oh, she knew. She knew that I was going to try to catch her for some reason. And like I started to like to try to like speed up and like she could hear me and she just she would not let me pass her. And then like we just we like chopped it up like after <laughs> and we just started laughing. But we have the same birthday. It oh, was no like kidding? around. Yeah, I think January 21st. Yeah. Yeah, that's my birthday. <laughs> I'm the Yo, worst. Yeah. <laughs> it took me a while. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, bro. But it, I think it was like around our birthday because like that, like it came up. But it was like, that's how I met your wife. Like we were, I was just randomly running turnball. And then like I would randomly see her with the boys at the park and stuff. And I was like, oh, hey, what's up? Like, but she's tough as nails, dude. Yeah, dude. I see her like Instagram with You got to see her on jiu -jitsu. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, I can only imagine. I can't, go, I can't go on the mats without people telling me, hey, man, your wife. She's a badass. She's a beast, man. She's a badass. She kicks my butt you know, yeah. all, all the time. That's <laughs> rad, dude. No, she's, she's a good one. And man. she is super one. competitive, man. Oh. She's the same way with jiu-jitsu. And she loves to come home and tell me about, you know, her her day in jiu-jitsu. That's great. You know, you know whether she got, whether she, and, and you know, she she's tapping out dudes. You know what I mean? <laughs> and she's 41 years old and she's tapping out young, young 20, 25 Good. year olds. Yeah. It's amazing. Good. Dude. It's just so amazing. I've been living by this like thing, um, lately and I kind of was doing it a couple months ago or a couple years ago, but it's like this slogan, it's like move or die. Like you could sit on your couch and like watch all of game of Thrones or like you can move mm. because like if you don't move and I I've been guilty of it, I'm sure you have, everybody has like you, your body just starts to stiffen up take that couple weeks off a couple months off well that's one of the biggest problems that i was having uh i just finished a, a job uh in beverly hills okay. uh, just a, a few days ago or you know this last week and you know i'm traveling an hour and a half there hour and a half back sitting down for eight hours with an hour lunch so i'm out there for nine ten eleven twelve hours of the day Easily. waking up early coming back but sitting the whole time and i could already see and feel like, man, I'm about to have a stroke. I'm about Stiff to have a heart attack. Yeah, I'm getting, I put on 20 pounds. Fast. Like, I just felt horrible. Yeah. And uh, that was a tough three months, man. It was real tough. So I'm glad that's over. And yeah. now it's time for me to, you know, move on and, you know, figure out what's next. So you do family law? As a paralegal. Yeah. So how did you get into that? I went to law school. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what made know you what go that? What made you go that direction though? Like something had to have, even if it was. Uh, small. you know, you know, I thought it was easier than unlawful detainers. Okay. Like uh, I was doing, I was doing different things. Like you know, I was when I, when me and my wife, we started th this company called Legal Stock, Legal Doc Guy. Yeah. And we still have it, of course. Um, I still, so I still have clients that I do, mm -hmm. and I just enjoyed the family law more, even though I, I still don't like it. Yeah. But but I, I it was easier with the paperwork and writing the declarations, all that kind of stuff. And a few times I helped dudes, just like uh, you know, when I, when I was helping you, right? Yeah, I, I was helping that. different friends, you know, like uh, get their visitation with their kids and all that kind of stuff. And I liked it. I liked helping a, a guy or a woman. You know, there's sometimes there's women I help them uh, keep a psycho dad away or. Or there's, you know, you're not, yeah. you, you know about that. I do know, actually. Right? So, and, 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 and so, you know, I was helping, you know, people. The only thing I don't like is the divorce stuff. Yeah. Because I'm big on marriage, you know, and I think yeah. marriage is important. And I, I struggle in my marriage. Don't Everybody get me wrong. Does. Everybody does, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do, I do, I think marriage is so important. I do everything I can to keep it together. Um, and so the marriage stuff kind of, you know, doing divorces kind of bothers me, but, but not enough to, that's not why I don't want to do this kind of yeah. work anymore. It's mostly I don't want to do this kind of work because I'm just sedentary all it's, the time. It's ugly. Too, it's a, yeah, it's ugly. And I, I just don't enjoy it anymore. Yeah, I enjoy, I you. you know, doing this podcast. The, the job that I was doing in Beverly Hills, I was working for this palimony firm mm -hmm. where they just did palimony, divorce palimony stuff. Palimony is like, guys, guys don't realize this, but you start making promises to your girlfriend and you guys are living together and you're shacking up and you're making promises like, we don't have common law marriage in California, but they, they can sue you in contract uh, civil, civilly. And you, some of these guys, you know, they make good money and they're paying for these girlfriends for a lot of money, paying a lot of money. So 
man out there. You guys, like should when think. they separate. Yeah, like you were just cohabitating together, but maybe maybe you make a lot more money than she does, what? and she's helping you acting like a wife. Yeah, the guys don't realize this, man. Like That's you, crazy. you could you could end up paying. Like not alimony spout, for not yeah, being but they married? call it but they call it palimony. That's crazy. Yeah, dude, it's crazy stuff. And that and that's a real thing here. No way. Absolutely. So you know, you guys out there, man, you guys need to be careful with that because you might as well just yeah. get married. You Sounds know what I mean? Like it. it. It's it's pretty bad. So anyway, I, I stopped doing that kind of work for now. Uh, I still do it for Legal Doc Guy, but I but I'm not at that firm anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, the the drive was just too much. No, and and it was good money. Yeah, it was good yeah, money. That's where I go to work for work. Oh, is that, that's a um, lot. Like I meant Universal City, but it's not too far from. Ooh, Beverly that's Hills. a drive. But I'm yeah. sure you, you, with the kind of work, it sounds like you're on your feet. Oh yeah, yeah. Twelve, um, kind of twelve. It's, I swear, it's like sixteen, really. Because right. I wake up at four. I have to be there by six. But like, I get up, I make my breakfast, I try to limber up a little bit, and then I'm pretty much on my feet all day. Because you're around a lot of people. Oh man, sometimes there's like 200 people. On oh, that's great, man. Yeah. See, I was at that firm. I was by myself. Oh, I was the yeah. only employee. I could see. I couldn't do that. I, oh. I not only can I not sit for like a long set, uh, period of time, but like I, I'm very hands on, and like it's hard for me to do tedious things. Like I need big projects, like where there's like I don't know. It's, I'm just uh, that's just the way I'm wired. Yeah. I mean, sitting at the computer because that, that's what I was doing. Sitting at a computer by yeah. myself in an office. And just no social, no social, nothing. no nothing. I was, I was, wow. I mean, I wasn't really, it wasn't that I was lonely, but I was just like, no, I get it. I'm killing myself. I need to be around people. I need like uh, to no, move, you to need be on my feet. And you I'm need- just writing. Imagine being in, in school and you're just writing reports all day, you're writing documents, imagine. document, you know, drafting documents all day. Yeah, so it's, it it's seems bad. like it'd be repetitive and a it's little bit boring and lonely yeah. and all that kind no, of stuff. I, and then, I totally and then the drive, our three hour driving every day didn't help either. No. Yeah, that's I I know about the drive, so I get it. Yeah, and that's the cool thing about my job; it's super physical. So like, and I I feel like I kind of excel because our industry is we make a lot of money, but it's a big party industry. Mm. So like, you get dudes like drinking on their breaks, nine o'clock, twelve o'clock, three o'clock in the day. Yeah, wow, going to sip in their car. I was one of those guys. Mm. Um, doing this, doing that. I don't have to, you know, name specifics, but just doing a lot of different things and. Um, a lot of these guys, things catch up to them because like after 10 years of partying, like you're, you're, you're shot. So like, that was cool. Like going into this industry, being like somewhat in shape, like I excelled because I was lasting a lot longer than a lot of these guys. You know what I mean? Like, because I took care of myself. Mm. I was in bed at eight o'clock. I'm not drinking. I'm eating healthy. I'm, I do I lift weights and I do some type of cardio, whatever the situation is. And then it's funny because I noticed like this pattern where like at first I was like, oh, you're the like, oh, you're like a vegan workout guy. Huh? Like because they're just being typical guys they are being dicks. Right, right. And then fast forward like two. Well, three you years. opened yourself up with the whole ve- you're yeah. vegan. Is that what I'm not. <laughs> but I swear people just assume because you eat healthy like that, you don't you're vegan or you're vegetarian. Oh, gotcha. Like it's just like such a typical thing to say. I swear I've heard it so many times like, right. oh, I didn't know you ate ma- meat. I'm like, bro, I'll, I'll, I'll eat you any day. Like <laughs> I could eat a whole pizza by myself and still be hungry. Like. But it's funny because I would see these people that would kind of give me shit for like working out and not drinking and being healthy. And then you see them three years later, like, bro, I got to get in shape. Bro, what's your secret? Bro, bro this. Dude, my, my legs are numb. Yeah. And I'm just like, just get it together. Like, stop drinking. Like, start eating right. Start just simple stuff. And it, it's it's just funny seeing like that, um, you know, because I've been doing it almost eight years, like seeing the same people and like seeing the people that go one way or people that go the other. Right. Like, and um, we only have one body, dude. Like, we got to take care of it. You have to, bro. Yeah. And like I said, my grandma lives across the street, and she's 88, and she's slowed down tremendously, but she still does her walks. Mm. And um, I tell her, grandma, you got to keep moving. Cause, and I'm not 88, so I can't really – I don't feel what she feels, but my grandma, like, she's been through a lot physically, and she's, like, totally against painkillers and medicine, so she just, like, bears the pain. She's so super old school, and I'm just like, man, like my grandma's a real one. Yeah, like, they don't make them like that. Nah, like They're I would be many. popping a pill or yeah. something. Like yeah, okay. she got shot in her knee, her hips bad, all kinds of crap, and like she just she refuses. She just keeps moving, and I'm like, that's probably where we all get it from. Mm. Yeah, my grandma, she's 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 a real one. <laughs> she's yeah, she's she's uh something else. You know, I want to ask you about uh how 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 
how long have you been with your girlfriend, right? Because uh, <laughs> I know that you guys are in a uh, long distance relationship. Yes. Like, how's that work, man? Oh man, this story's uh, funny. Um, so I've known her since my early twenties. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so I've known her for a long time, almost like out of high school. And uh, we kind of like dated or whatever you want to call it, like in our early 20s. We were both just partying a lot. So um, she ended up like going her separate way to Washington. And then like I obviously I stayed here. And then uh, she so you so she was here. She she grew up here. In, in and then, but you guys County. were dating and then she just took off. Yeah, she took off. Like we we're just we we're in our early 20s. We were partying and like oh, we were I both see. just being troublemakers. And like it just kind of like fizzed out i guess you want to say i don't know if she would call it that okay um but she took off to washington for whatever reason she did and then she started her own life out there and then um you know you fast forward like what 17 years almost oh, 15 wow. years so then uh then social media came yeah so social thing. media came and like we kind of stayed in contact but she was married so like i just like did I stayed away and I, I was obviously like in my relationship and this and that. And right. then, um, we just kind of like, she, she ended up like separating from her husband and like, she wanted to like actually have a relationship with me. And like, she's great. Like even before I was like, we actually committed, like, you know, she wanted to be with me, but I could never do the long distance thing. Like I couldn't, I'm not, I just never saw myself as that guy, you know? Yeah, like, I mean, that's a, I mean, I don't know. It's that, hard. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. True. But, um, so. But well, how'd you guys reconnect? We reconnected on, like, social media, and then, like, she just, like, came out here. Because her family was already out here. But she would, like, come out here, and whenever she would come out here, like, I would see her. Because, like, it's a funny thing about her is, like, like, that spark, the spark with us, like, never left. Like, we both kind of, like, have that, like, there's like the same personality like she's a lot softer than i am because she's a woman but like we have like that same like sarcastic like asshole type of personality so like it just <laughs> it just like fit you know but um but we just like reconnected through like instagram and then like i was in another relationship and then that one like failed miserably i don't even want to get into that and then um oh, man those are the kind of stories not nah, just kidding bro no nah. <laughs> yeah she lives in here in Whittier so let's not nah, even nah, nah. yeah so <laughs> definitely not yeah so um I actually just we we rekindled like we had seen each other off and on over the years like she'd come down and like we just kind of like we're doing our thing and then like she just to be honest with you she's ride or die like she really was ride or die like I had been through a lot of different situations over the last couple of years and she was always there. Mm. Um, always like had an open ear, always gave me good advice, always soft, always kind. And um, she, like that. she never left. Yeah. Even like when she would see me like happy and thriving in like other relationships or just like, I wasn't in a lot of relationships. Like since I separated with my the mother, of my child, I was actually only in one. Mm. She still like was, she was respectful. She was cool. She just, she was obviously heartbroken, but she just always like, Hey, I just want you to be happy. And I'm just like, man, like she was just a real one. Yeah. And then like, it just, you know, um, you know, things fizzed out with the last relationship I was in. And then like, I was just kind of doing my thing and she just, she was still there. And I, I hate for it to sound like, well, she's there. So like, let's make it happen. Like, the only thing that was holding me and this woman back the whole time was two states. And I told her this. Yeah. And she'll listen to this and she'll agree with me. Like, I, we were always super transparent with each other. Like, there was nothing that kept me away from this woman except for a thousand miles. Right. And, um, you know, like, I've had conversations with my mom and my sister and other people. And they were just like, you're not going to find somebody like her. You're just not. Like, this is a one in a million, like type of opportunity and like i do know that i i really do i i knew it a long time ago but it's just like that that physical for me and it's not i don't mean physical in a sexual way i mean like going to the grocery store with your partner going to the movies like just being around somebody mm. i i i needed that and i i wasn't gonna have it with her so that's just always pushed me away so um 
I just, you know what? I just said, you know what? Fuck it. Like I love this woman and she adores me and I gave it a shot and it's, it's been tough, but well, how often do you guys see each other? We see each other every two to three weeks. Oh, well, it's not too bad. No, it's not. Like, yeah. it, it's just enough time. Like, two. we were doing two weeks for a long time, and then, like, sometimes we'll do three. Like, it's do, just, do you guys take turns coming yes. back and up? Yes. So, like, I'm going up to Washington next weekend. Okay. And, uh, she was just down here. So, like, What's her just, name? Give her a shout-out. Sheena. Sheena. <laughs> Sheena Combs. Right. Sheena Maza, actually. So Combs will be disappearing very soon. <laughs> Are you guys engaged? No, that's her uh, ex-husband's last name. Oh, is that, oh, That's the name I on see. her ID. I see, I see. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, we, we make it work. She's she's great. Um, super supportive. Um, is I, that what's keeping you guys apart? I mean, uh is it because of the kids yeah. that she can't move down here? She move? can't. She can't. So like, and well, you, you know, can't move up there because you got your job and your kids. I yeah, like I'm, and she knows that. Like, it's like situational because like she can move and she wants to move because one, her family's down here. They're here. Yeah. Two, she has like this person that's not a good person. That's, you know, I'm just gonna call it, you know, a spade a spade. That's the father of their kids isn't a good person in my opinion mm -hmm. we'll let the courts decide that one and uh you know she has a good job but like she can do the same thing down here she does child care oh okay so she works with kids like she's like state certified to work with kids background check all that stuff so nice. she's like great with kids and um that's you know that's that's the plan you kind of know the gist of it because we have been talking like, you know, last couple of weeks a little bit here and there. But um, we're just trying to work towards her getting down here. And um, if by some miracle her the father of the kids get it together, then he can move down here and be a part of the kids lives. You know, we had that conversation. But yeah. as of right now, um, she's fighting to move down here and it's looking pretty good yeah i think you guys are close yeah it's it's looking pretty good we've been having the conversation and uh she just did the thing um this weekend where she didn't give the kids back and he tried to like argue it and she kind of like checked him and was like hey like this is what it says like if you want to talk to your lawyer you guys can go over the paperwork and he just kept his mouth shut mm. because he knew yeah he was like trying to manipulate the situation because it's like it's the conversations like on a talking parents app yeah so everything's documented even if it's not, she could screenshot everything. Yeah, it's absolutely, not gonna, yeah. But, like, this is different because this is a court order. Like, they're court ordered to talk to talking parents. Mm. So, like, the way he words things, this guy is just, he's just like, oh, I'm the best dad ever. And I've always put my kids first. And I've always done this. And I've always done that. And she just says, court will decide that then. Mm. Well, the proof will, the proof will, the truth shall set you free. Right. You think if, he'll go away or? <sighs> I... Not that I necessarily think no, that, no. that's the best thing. No, for no, those kids. I, I, I don't, just, I don't take it. I don't take it as that. Um, I genuinely, honestly, don't want him to go away. I want him to get his shit together. Yeah, I want him to realize what he has in front of him. These three beautiful kids, mm -hmm. and like, get it together, dude. Like, you have this opportunity to be a good role model for these kids, and you're you're doing the opposite. And that's the conversation we had this morning. Like he was saying all these things. I'm a good father. I'm a good father. I'm this. I'm, I'm their kids need their fathers and this and that. And it's like you're throwing the father word around like like it's you're not you're you're not a father. Like you're just somebody he, he, he likes power. And that's the only power he has left is with those kids. That's from what I see. Right. I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not all knowing. I'm. It's just what I see. He doesn't have anything left in his life. Mm. So if he if these things disappear from him, like he's he has nothing. Is and he working at least? Yeah, he just got a new job and he kind of has a stable place. He was living in his car for a little bit. And um we pray for him. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't want to. I don't I don't I'm not gonna lie, I don't like the guy. I don't hate him. I yeah. don't hate anybody. It's a tough one. Yeah. But we pray for him because I really don't want him to disappear. I want him to get it together. <laughs> Part of me hopes he doesn't just so like she can move down here and then like maybe get it together and move down here. But everything right now is, um, it's looking good for us. And, um, she's going by the book. She, most of all, she's standing her ground. This guy was, this guy manipulated her for 10 years. Yeah. That's super important. Yeah. So she's standing her ground. Like when he tries to say certain things, I'm all nah. I'm going to check him. I'm all, you, you have the power. And 
the way she words everything is so she's so like it's almost like you would probably word it like she's so professional in the words she uses she's she doesn't um insult him she doesn't talk bad about him to the kids she doesn't she's just so smart and even if she could talk bad about him she wouldn't yeah she she wants him to be a part of the kid's life that's so destructive when moms uh, talk negatively about their dad yeah the kids dads you know yeah, you know, like I had told you, me and me and um, the mother of my child kind of went through a little tug of war at the beginning, and I won't get into details. You know, God forbid she ever hears this, and I don't want to put our business out there like that. But um, we kind of had to go to a tug of war, and we had to go to court, and some bad things were said, and and it's just funny. It's like now we're just so like we're like we're we're like we're almost friends. Yeah, we're super That's cordial, cool. and yeah, like yeah. I can sit here and tell you that I wasn't the best guy, and I can have accountability, and um. But I'm not going to sit here. I don't have anything bad to say about um, the mother of my child because she really is a good person and she put up with a lot of shit and she's a damn good mom. Mm. I would proudly say the same thing about this guy if that's what the case was. Because even if me and Sheena weren't together, I would still want the same thing for her. As just not only as like a friend, but as a human being. Every child deserves not only a good mom, but a good dad or vice versa. Like... And parents who get along. Yes. Yeah, and, super and important. The good things just weren't happening with this guy. And, um, you know, I am I feel like I'm the one that, like, steered her towards, like, the route she was going. Because she was kind of, like, living her life and just letting it slide. And I'm like, bro, like, if you want to be with me, these things need to happen. Because this is not cool. Mm. And, Lord and behold, we started going that route. And she's, she started getting the things that she deserves. And she was getting it legally because the judicial system was seeing it. There was proof of it. So it's like justice was served. She still doesn't get child support. She oh, still, no. Yeah. So it's like this guy, he, man, I, I, like I said, I, we're just going to pray for him and hope he gets it together. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that her and the kids end up down here. Um, great kids, great kids, full of energy, uh, two boys and a girl. And then I have my boy, so we'll have a full house. But um, I'm stoked. How old's your boy? He's five. Oh, oh, he's Aiden's age. Yeah, we got to get him together. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, your kids could probably toughen up my kid a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Warren's not soft. He's just it's just a different personality. Have they played together before? They have, and they played really well. Oh, yeah. did they? Yeah, it was at the park. It was yeah. at um, Michigan. Okay. Yeah, Warren didn't want to leave. I think was or no, we yeah we were leaving. You guys were staying. And he's like all bent about it, but um. Yeah, it, it's just, you know, it, it'll be, uh, you know, the youngest will be three, and then I have Warren that's five, um, Magnum's five, and then Harry is seven. So there's, it'll be, it'll be a full house. Yeah. And, uh, I, God, if God provides and I'm able to take the role that they haven't, in my opinion, seen in the last five years, which is like a strong um, male role in the house, I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to take that role mm. because the kids need it. They, they need it. You know, like the conversation we had, the, the kids need the, the female and the male role. Like um, it's, it's my job to protect and to provide. And then it's also a woman's job to protect too. Yeah. Um, but it's more of a nurturing thing. One, but, of the um, thing, one of the things I learned from uh, going to church and stuff and reading the Bible and what I've come out with it is that it's really important for men to pro be providers, yeah. protectors, mm -hmm. and also preachers. Yeah. Uh, a lot of men, obviously, we don't think about that. You know, about one, one mistake I made with my older kids is that I never once ever talked to them about God. And yeah. you know what's funny? All three of my older ones are, you know, self proclaimed atheists or whatever. Mm. And, uh, don't really I, I as far as i know i mean i haven't talked to them in years about this sort of stuff but mm -hmm. kind of have the attitude that you know they don't need jesus or don't believe in that kind of stuff yeah and, uh it's only my youngest one that prays i catch her praying by herself and stuff like wow. that i've i think i finally got it right but it's so important for dads because the dads as the leaders in the home i mean obviously the the wives call a lot of the shots but as being a leader the father in the home it's just a natural thing yeah the kids are, are likely to stay in the faith and likely to model the father if he's if he's in the word and if he's preaching in the home. Yeah. Like 
praying with his kids, living close to God, living close to God. They go to church, not to get all in the, into the female male war or anything like that, no. but they, they, they supposedly they show that, and I believe it's true that the kids are more likely to stay in the church and go to church and things like that. If the dad's doing it. Yeah, no, that like, makes sense. You know, I grew up with a mom. Uh, she was a, she wasn't a, technically a single mother, but you know, uh, you know, she, she, my dad wasn't around, so she took us to church and stuff, but we never stuck with it. Yeah. But I had my dad, who was a great provider, but never took us to, you know, took us to church or yeah. paid much attention to us, to be honest with you. Um, had he done that, you know, things would have been different. I agree. Because you're going with your, you know, you're going with your father. I agree. If your father's in it and he's the, hey, you're going to church and you're doing this, you're going to do it. No, no one messes with the dad. A hundred percent. And that's what that's what that's what really gets to me is that when uh fathers are not in the home and they're not do, taking care of their responsibility of being with their kids. You know? Yeah. I mean, if you're not the best provider, you know, financially, whatever. Yeah, everyone you know, has their I, yeah. everybody has their I've been limitations. There. Yeah, been me there. too. And uh but and but being a good preacher in the home or just, you know, in, engage with your kids yeah like you being at the park with your son and all that kind of stuff yeah. like that's so critical oh all you know, my my stepson's you know they got a good dad he's always uh, at their games and doing stuff uh, okay. aside from being a good provider you know he's always you know with them uh doing stuff with them that's, that's so critical you know yes it's, it's gonna keep them out of jail 100%. you know and 100%. so you know if i can encourage any father out there is man don't neglect your kids because it's, it's not enough just to provide no it's not. It's not enough. You, it, you gotta be there, dude. you know, providing, protecting, and preaching. Everything. All that. You you put it on the money, and then that was a conversation that we had this morning, kind of pertaining to this conversation. It was he kept throwing around. I'm I'm such a good father, and I always put them first, and all this and all that. And we're just like kind of laughing, like, no, you don't. But he, I think the problem with uh, that I had with what he was saying is he. Because he thinks just because they're his, those are his biological kids, that by that right that he's just a good father because because he's, as if wanting them is enough. Yes, yes, and that's what bothered me. I'm just like, I'm like, dude, but you're you're using that title as just an excuse to do not even the bare minimum, and that's what like bothered me. I'm just like. You're not connecting with your kids. You're not. There's no substance. There's nothing. The kids come back and and, and the kids are coming back and telling us things that he's saying about the mom to them. And we're like, bro, they're three, five and seven. Like, what's wrong with you? This is not stuff. These aren't conversations for kids. Right. And on top of that, like, that's that's manipulation. Yeah. It's so irritating when when the, when a parent does that and tries to sabotage a relationship with a with the other parent. At me and Amanda's worst, the mother of my child, we never once said anything bad about each other to our son. We've had words between each other and thank God they haven't got like super heated or like never aggressive or anything, but like we we don't do that. We don't do that. And Warren doesn't do that in general because we're not that's not how we're going to raise him. You don't speak bad about people. You don't you don't talk trash. You you need to be a leader. Right. And I think that's going back to the conversation that you were just talking about is like, if the man can lead, then everyone will follow. The wife will follow. That's in the Bible too. The wife will follow and the kids will follow because like you're setting an example. And that's what bothered me was like, you're not setting an example, bro. You're just saying, I'm a father. I'm the father. I'm the father. There's responsibility that comes with that title. You're throwing the title around because you want to try to convince us because you got an Airbnb for a week for the kids that you're like, you're a good father. Cool. What do you, what's going on at the house? They're staying up till all hours of night eating candy, like talking crap on mom. Mm. I'm just like, uh, he's basically just raising their like sugar. They're getting a sugar high and being manipulated at the same he, time. He's hanging out with them. Yeah. You're just hanging. Yeah. You know, there's a difference between hanging out with your kids and parenting your kids. Yeah, but I but I, I genuinely believe he's just feeding him junk mm -hmm. and then, like, at the same time saying certain things. And, like, that's all the kid's going to remember is that, like, dad's right. 
because they're having candy and ice cream and no bedtime and no structure. You're so a great dad because you're giving me candy. Yeah, <laughs> we, we knew that's what was happening, and I'm just like, no, nah, we're I'm That done. does happen, though. No. It's manipulative. Not taking the kids to school, nothing. And right. we're just like, bro, this is illegal. Like, I mean, that's something a, a divorce lawyer would tell you or going through a child custody battle, a, a lawyer, any lawyer worth their salt is going to tell you, spoil that kid because, you know, we're in a battle yeah. for the kids. You know, and you need those kids need to like you. <laughs> you know, you could just spoil it, but it, but it's it's not good because it teaches the kids. They learn, oh, I could play mom against dad, and dad and yeah, and dad against mom, yeah. and then they end up the little kids end up being manipulative. And, and that's stuff. yeah, that's like that's the tough part. It's like dealing with when they come back from the dads. I you can see the change, and me and I, I'm not there, so it's hard for me too. Yeah, like I can't discipline the kids through the phone, and I'm just so frustrated. Mm. And sometimes like that causes like a little bit of a. Like a rift between me and Sheena. And she knows it too. She's, she gets it. And she, that, the cool thing about Sheena is she, she actually told me this. She's like, I'm glad you're in my life because I've always had to be the man. She always had to be the provider. I think she, a lot of women feel that way. Yeah. About no, their dude, he's a loser. Yeah. Never could keep a job. She was always paying the bills, always taking care of the kids, doctors, everything. He didn't do anything. Mm. So she had to be both roles, even while they were married. The only problem is, is that a woman can't be both roles. No. And you she know, knows it. They try, but they, they can't. Like, uh, nope. I used to hear uh, women say things like, oh, I had to be both mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, no. Like, it's all impossible. you can be is the best mom you could possibly be. Yeah. But you can never replace a dad. No. And, and, you know, I've, I've told women, you know, your kid your kid turned out great and you did a great job. But he was still mm -hmm. at a, your kid was still at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Because had they had their father in their life, they'd be even more amazing than they already are. Yeah. And that's, that's tough for women to hear. But it it's the truth too. It's it kind of like when I tell a woman, you know, you weren't a single, like women who co-parent, they got a good dad, like you, you're, you're, you're a co-parent, right? You, yeah. You, you co-parent Warren with your, with his mother. Yes. And I hate it when women will throw that word around. Oh, I'm a single mom just cause you're not together. Yeah. And, I, and I've had a, I had to scold my <laughs> child's mother. Yeah. I was like, no, you're not a single mother. A you're single mother is a woman who's been abandoned yeah. by the father and the kid has no dad in their yeah. life and he's gone. That I'm makes, here for my child. That I, makes you know, sense, actually. I've absolutely makes sense. I've never thought about it. No, that way. well, that's that's the real deal because there's a lot of women out there, and I've talked to my wife about this, and her sister, and other people. I've I've talked yeah. to I talk to women about this all the time because I really believe this that in our society we put down men, and a lot of times women don't realize they're putting down men because when my when my baby's mama was telling me, I'm a you know well, I heard her talking about how she was a single mother, and I was like, no, you're not. You're basically when you tell people you're a single mother, you're there. You're implying to those people that, that you're, you're that the father's a deadbeat. Yeah. He abandoned you. Yeah, you're not a single mother. You're a co-parent. Get yeah. that. Get that right. I remember no, she said that right. to the to the teacher one time. Oh, I'm a single mother, so I have this problem. I was like, you're not a single mom. What the heck are you talking about? And so that that always pissed me off when when I hear. I always ask a woman. I'll ask her. When you say you're a single mother, are you saying that you, the father has abandoned you? Yeah. Or are you saying uh? that you're you know that the i mean does a guy provide for his kid does he whatever anyway long story short i just want to make sure that women understand hey man there's a difference between being a co-parent and an actual single mother no you're absolutely right yeah. and that goes with being said with what you said about like the, it would be different if the if like the the male was around and i think it goes for vice versa too let's say you're a single father that kid would be different too if the yeah. if the mom was around too like hey. it goes with saying like they need both. They do. And that's a conversation I've actually had with the mother of my child. You know, we've kind of like get into like little differences here and there because we have totally different styles. Structurally and like, this is not discipline, but just like the structure of Warren's life is we do it the same way. That's so imp that's important too. Yeah. We do we both yeah. do it the same way. They're, the structure's there with both of us at both houses. Because a lot of times parents won't. They, yeah, they no. like uh, like with, with the, my wife, her and the, the father, they both have good homes, but they're they're ran differently, yeah. and you know they they spoil their kids in different ways. Yeah. And but but the the rules change, and that's that's I think that's hard for the kids to yeah because they're they're abiding by the rules over here, and then the rules don't apply, and they, and they don't understand. Hey, those rules don't apply at this house. Yeah, it's different. It's, it's different, different with with me and with me and Amanda. The structure is still kind of the same, but um, there was a conversation we had one day. We we're kind of getting into it, and I said, "Look, like your job." as Warren's mom is, is to nurture and to protect him and to show him how to be soft. Mm -hmm. 
my job as a man is to protect, provide for Warren and um, to show him how to be hard for say. And she's like, I don't want my son to be tough. And I'm like, that's not what I'm saying. Mm. The way I was taught to be tough and the way I'm going to teach Warren to be tough are two totally different things. I'm, I don't want Warren to be tough. Like I was taught to be tough. That's different. Like, uh, like that, that style of parenting is, 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 is medieval to me. It's, it's just gone. I don't, I don't like it. I, I'm not against it, but I can still teach my son to be tough and to have grit and grit in a soft way. And she kind of like paused and like agreed with me. Cause she kind of get was she, because she know she knows enough about me and she knows enough about my childhood to know that like, I didn't have an easy childhood and, and some of the things I seen and experienced were shitty. And she just thought like that, oh, I'm going to like do this to Warren or do that. It's like, no, but I still want to instill in Warren that he, he needs to be tough because not, he's a man and this, this world, (laughs) it's not, this world isn't like getting, getting a toy every day you go to Target. Right. Or getting the participation award or someone always, a kid always wanting to play with you. You know, like, you know, you you've seen it. These things. Yeah, you've absolutely. seen it when you go to the playground and the kids want to play with somebody and the kid doesn't want to play with them. Like your kid's heartbroken and you're almost pissed too. You're mm. like, what the heck? Yeah, right, right. But like, I've had to teach Warren like, hey, bro, like they don't want to play with you. They yeah. don't want to play what with you. What are you going to do? Go find somebody else. Yeah. I'll play with you. But you figure it out. Like that's like a little part of the toughness that I'm trying to teach him. Right. I don't like it when the kids want me to play, be the playmate. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, you need to go out there and socialize yeah. and make friends. So it just yeah. happened today at the park. We went to the park and there was a, this thing this kid was doing. And he's like, oh, I want to try it with him. And I'm like, go ask him. Mm-hmm. And in the past, when we first separated, like Warren wouldn't do that. And now like with me, I'm just like, go do it. Go do it. I was like, I'm not going to. Yeah, you're five and you're still you're still young and you're still soft. And I'm going to hold your hand and carry you till I can but there's some things you just need to do on your own Mm. and you need to experience those things on your own you need to experience rejection you need to experience um having being in a group setting um problem solving together with kids on the playground because who's it first and who's 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 um who are we gonna catch and tag right you know what i mean like just little stuff he needs to experience that and um i don't want him to always think he's gonna win either like bro you're gonna lose a lot that's one of the best lessons I've gotten in life is is losing. Absolutely. And like getting my ass back up and wiping the dirt off because like if I didn't learn those things and I didn't learn those things the way I learned them, like how am I going to teach my son that like, bro, you're not going to win every time. You're not going to win a lot of the time. That's why we don't need, that's why we got to get rid of things like person to participation trophies, <laughs> man. Because I never understood that. Why, I didn't why, either. I've seen it happen. At first, I didn't think it was a real thing. No, it's a real thing. But it's a real thing, man. Yeah, everyone you know? gets a trophy. And I don't like that. I, I don't either. Um, But, you know, it's just the society we live in today. But It's gotten softer. Oh, 100%. Yeah. We're coddling everybody. Oh, my gosh. And you know what's funny? I, I think it, like, we, we started that, con- we started this, like, kind of talking about that, but... I do feel like there was like this, there, there was this generation, like this 10 year generation where the kids were softer, but I do genuinely feel like we're going back to that, mm. like that sternness that, that, and we're raising our kids in a different There's like way. a revival in Christianity too, man. Yeah. You know, I see my neighbor, uh, not my neighbors, but my, the neighbors here, they, uh, you know, doing prayer circles out in the front yard and stuff. Well, yeah. and I was like, man, I've never seen them do that before. And I was like, it's great. You know, yeah. It's great. Like, I think a lot of people... Uh, for whatever the reasons are, uh, are finding their way to God and stuff. I think there's a lot of influential people, like even like Joe, someone like Joe Rogan. Yeah. I see videos of him, you know, at least talking about a lot of the Bible. Uh, or Huberman or are talking, uh, right. All Jordan Peterson, are they all Jordan kind Peterson. of, he just has a new book out. That's a kind of a religious. Is that right? Yeah. I forgot what it's called. He's got, he's done quite a few books actually. I have I think, two of uh, them on some like old Testament books talking, like going in depth in them. He's <sighs> a genius, man. Yeah. Super I don't smart, agree right. with everything that he says, but right. he's a really, really smart, intelligent, right. educated, well-read, opinionated man. Yeah, I'd love to get him on the show. Man. Oh, that would be that would be great. <laughs> that's dude. a goal. That's a goal of mine. Oh yeah, no, it's gonna happen, dude. Just keep praying about it. Absolutely, man. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. prayer is so important, man. Oh yeah, it's uh, I, I'm not the best at prayer, you know. Me either. I try to wake up every morning and do it. I mean, there's I have weeks or months where I'm on it, I'm on it, and then I have weeks and months where like, like 
man, I forgot to pray today. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, and a day never goes by when I don't get into my Bible or, mm-hmm. or, or, or read or pray really. But I mean like real, really praying, like taking time early in the morning when everybody's asleep still yeah. and like getting on my knees yeah. and praying to God and, and actually spending real quality time. It's one thing to listen to a, a 20 minute po- uh, you know, video on yeah. something about God or, reading the Bible, reading a chapter, I read at least a chapter a day, you know, uh-huh. reading something, but, but really getting into the spending quality time. I got to get back into that. I fell off hard. It's I'm hard. not going to lie. It's yeah. super hard, man. I mean, cause especially when our lives are going well. Yeah. We, <laughs> That's what my girl, she actually asked me a couple weeks ago. She's like, Hey, um, I ask you a question. I was like, what's up? And she's like, what's going on with your walk right now? Like I've noticed like, you're just kind of like you've strayed away and like, I have an answer for everything. And like, I just, I was like, I don't know. And I did know, but like, I, it's not, it wasn't like an embarrassment thing. I just didn't know what to say to that. Cause I didn't think, I didn't think she noticed or anybody noticed. And it goes to what you were just saying. Like everything was going so well in my life. Work was going good. I was able to see Sheena back and forth and we're doing the thing and it's working. And like, yeah, there's some obstacles with baby daddy and like, all this but things were going our way and and then like i just kind of fell off i stopped praying as much i missed church a couple times here and there i was starting to go to groups and i stopped doing that and um i stopped reaching out to friends that were like involved in the church and i had to check myself and i still have to check myself i'm just like hey like this isn't the way it works like this isn't like like yeah god has grace and all that stuff and he forgives but like what what are you really doing to stay close to God? Because it sounds like it, it, for, for a little while it was like, Hey, like you gave me what I wanted. And now like, cool later, man. See ya. Like, I'll talk to you when I talk to you. And you then know, you know what the cool thing is though, man. Uh, and I really believe this. I think God understands all that. He understands our, yeah. he understands our nature and, and the Bible says he never leaves us. You know, it doesn't never, it's us who turns our back. It's us who forgets yeah. about the relationship, but God's always right there, mm-hmm. always ready to pick it up right where we left off. Yeah, man. And it's, uh, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. Cause I just, I just personally found God like, like you're, you're a year into sobriety. Mm-hmm. I'm a year into like finding God. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's almost the same thing in a way, but it's obviously it's a lot different. Um, but it's it's brand new for me. I'm tr- I try like there's days where I'm on fire with God, mm. and then there's days where I just completely forget that like everything that I have is because of Him. You know, my sobriety, um, the relationship I have with my son, my job, um, everything. And like sometimes, like I said, I have to like lately I've been having to check myself, and I'm just like, bro, what like you need, I need to get, I need to start getting closer to God again, you know, because, um, that's, that's the reason why my life was going so good and it's going to go bad too. I know that. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a, oh, I, I keep in the back that. of my mind. Hey, you could take, God can take things away from you. Like the book of Job, you know, yeah. where he, he can change either flip up your life upside down yeah. and anytime he wants. I mean, he's, and he, I think that's kind of happened to me a little bit here and there. And I don't, I don't want to blame God for it. I don't, I'm just like, dude, bro, it's like, you're, you're, you're responsible for everything. Like you choose, like, I forgot what book it is, but it's like the choice is yours. I think it's Micah. It's like the book that, that, that whole, um, the book is like about choice and it's like, um, like the devil can tempt you and God can guide you, but you're, the choice is still yours. Mm. The choice is still yours. Everything we do is, is a choice. You know, there's things we have to do, but it's still a choice. I have to go to work, but I'm still choosing to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I don't have to play with my son or interact with them, but I'm still choosing to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? I could... You know, anything, anything. I could be tempted to do something that I'm not supposed to, and that's still a choice. Like, the devil might be tempting me, but I'm still choosing to do it. Right. I can, it's like the bracelet. Yeah, we can't snap. use the devil as the, oh, the devil Scapegoat. made me do it. Yeah, yeah right. No, it's not, I, I don't, I, I'm i big, I'm huge on accountability. Mm. I, I, I feel like I am. Like, 
I've done a lot of bad things in my life and for a while I was always like, oh, I'm a piece of shit. I was a bad guy. Mm. Excuse me. I was this, I was that. And then at some point I was just like, bro, like you need to like, you know, I don't know if you'll experience this, so, but it's like, hey, bro, like you need to have some grace for yourself. Mm. You were this guy. You were this, you were that, but like, who are you now? And like, it took me a couple years into like not drinking to forgive myself for the, like a lot of the things I did. Cause I got, I got, I would get anxiety. Yeah. I would like be driving home from work on those hour drives, hour and a half drives from work. And I would get anxiety thinking about the things I used to do and guilt. And like, I'm like, Oh my God, I was such a piece of shit. And then it's just like, it started like as time went on, I was like, bro, like you gotta let it go. You gotta forgive yourself. Like there's this emotional baggage we don't really need. You know? Yeah. And it's dealing with emotions in general now. Cause it's like, I'm a baby. Mm -hmm. I'm seven years old to this emotion. <laughs> I really, that's how I look at it. Dude, you're a toddler. Bro. A, I think I'm the baby here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, um, if you ever, you know, need anybody to talk to, yeah, like, thanks, I, I, I'm here, bro. Like, I love talking about it because I just feel like my story is so, it's, I'm not that I don't feel like it's expiring or like that it's small, but it's just like, it's one of those things where I feel like if I can do it, anybody can do it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I really do because I'll never put myself on a pedestal. I didn't go to AA. I didn't go to rehab. I, could I have? Yeah, probably. I was in deep. Yeah. I was drinking almost every day and picking up this and picking up that and spending this and spending that. Like, I was pretty deep in there. But you're absolutely right, too, man, because there's men out there who are struggling with alcoholism or addiction. Yeah. And they need to hear from dudes that, hey, man, this is a better way to live yeah. this way. Because, you know, we're constantly bombarded with things on the Internet or on, I mean, we used to say the television, but now it's there on our phones yep. that just promote things like promiscuity mm -hmm. or promote alcoholism and drug mm -hmm. use. You know, I was listening to a song earlier today. I was just talking about crazy stuff. Like yeah. Drugs and sex, you know, just pretty much. And, and, and that's that's. Hollywood doing its thing that it's always done. It's supposed to be normal. And it's not. No. It's not normal at all. And so it's yeah. like uh, men men and young guys, you know, they need to hear from real other men that, hey, man, this this type of behavior is, is not normal. It's not good. It's not healthy for you. Yeah. That even with promiscuity, you know, when I, when I was a kid, man, I was everything revolved around, you know, what was the next piece of tail I was going to get? Yep. You know, and I would spend a lot of my time and effort just trying to get with girls. Same. And so what a ridiculous way to live your life. Like, yeah, like all the more missed opportunities or no discipline at all. No sexual discipline. Nothing. No, just nothing. Like, and I think back on those days, I'm like, man, what a, what a waster, man. Like, yeah. it's, it's horrible. And I, and I, I really would like to save the, a lot of men the heartache. Yeah. Because you can't feel yourself. The whole, whatever hole's in here, mm -hmm. the hole going on, it, you can't feel it with things like sex and drugs. No. It's a bottomless pit. We were talking about rock bottom earlier. The truth is, you know, when people tell me, oh, they're going to hit rock bottom soon. They're, they're, their life's so messed up. They're, they're about to hit rock bottom. And, I, and, I, and I'll always say, you have no idea that there's, there is no bottom. Yeah. You know, you, could, you can keep going. You hit your rock bottom. Everybody's I've hit my rock bottom. Different. Everybody's yeah, everybody's got a different depth different. of how low it can go. I mean, yeah. people. I mean, are they in the street? No. Well, then they they just keep going. Are yeah. they, uh, you know, turning tricks for money? Well, then they can keep going. Yeah. You know, they can keep going down, 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 down. Yeah. And so, I. Uh, it's really important to me, you know, with these having these conversations because there's there's people who need to hear. Yeah, I need to know, like, hey, man. First of all, I, I believe that Jesus Christ helped me. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if, if he's gonna, you know, if er not everybody wants to hear that, but if they could hear something, even if it's not related to Jesus, that they yeah. hear something that will help them get over that. Yeah. A lot of people, believe it or not, a lot of people are alone, and we never think about that. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of years of my life, uh, New Year's. I remember I spent at least two New Year's. By myself. I've done it too. In a so park, it's... drinking a beer because yeah. I had nobody. In a room by myself, <laughs> yep. Yeah? I know. Like, yeah. yeah? Or sometimes when you're even around people, mm. you're still alone. You still feel alone. Yes. Yeah, man. And that's the feeling I had when I quit drinking. I was like, I was alone. I wasn't alone. 
I can go through my phone and hit up freaking 20 different chicks or all these friends that party in LA or Orange mm. County or whatever. Right, right. But I was like, I was alone at that moment. Even with my best friend, my cousin sitting next to me, partying together, having a good time, I was like, something ain't right. Mm. Something ain't right. And it's like, I, you know, um, I, I, I do pride myself on, I don't think I've done anything significant, but I do pride myself on my story because um, I could have went a million different ways. Yeah. And like, thank God I didn't because like, most of all, like my son will yeah. like, he'll just, he's going to see the dad that's doing the best that he can until the wheels fall off. Right. And I'm able to do that because I'm happy mm. because I'm happy. Like even when I'm sad, I'm happy. Like I, I, maybe not happy, but I'm just grateful. I'm, I'm super grateful for like the opportunities I have, even like my job. I'm just like, man, I'm, I'm in a, in a job that's like one in a million. Mm. Like I really am. Like I'm in a union job, great paying pension. And it's just like small little pocket. It, it might seem like a lot, but it's just like small little pocket of people that work for the movie industry. And we get paid stupid money to make stupid TV shows and stupid movies. Mm. It, I provide. It's yeah. all good, but it's like I could be doing something else. I mean, minimum wage right now. <laughs> Come on, man. How you? Yeah, can't even can't can't live on that. So, I know you keep watching. Uh, what time you got till? I got. We're just about done here, man. No, we, perfect. Yeah, we we want to wrap up soon. My yeah. mom's gonna. Yeah, this was this was a lot of fun, man. Yeah, hell yeah, Mike, man, Mike Delgado. I hope you. Yes, sir. You know, you'll come on back. Uh, you know, in the future. Yeah, oh, you know, definitely. Great talking to you. And I appreciate you coming. No, out. I appreciate you having me. It's yeah. a, it's a pleasure's all mine. I'm I'm humbled. Absolutely.